All right, what is up, everybody? Eddie Barco here once again, your favorite host of the Nebula Music Podcast. And today, I am very excited because I have somebody who I am personally a fan of. I mean, I have tons of people on the show that I consider legends, that I consider people that are changing the game, that are doing really, really cool things. But every time I get a musician that I'm genuinely, genuinely in love with their music, I get all giddy inside. I get very much a fanboy because they're doing cool stuff, and I learn from them personally. And so I am beyond excited to have the very talented Kayvon joining me for a very cool conversation. Kayvon, how are you today, man? Good. I'm happy to be here, Eddie. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. I, it's my pleasure to have you on the show because, as I mentioned, you are an absolute legend when it comes to music and some of the stuff oh. that you've been putting out over the past couple of years. I think it's definitely groundbreaking and i can't wait to pick your brain a little bit i know we were talking a little bit about uh, about this earlier but i know that we're both in los angeles and one of the things that i kind of like to ask some people is how they've been dealing with the uh, the whole lockdown that happened did that affect you greatly by any chance i know that you might have had some performances and stuff in the works but then obviously the entertainment industry shut down how was that for you was that okay did you manage it okay yeah no it's definitely been a bit of a bummer because I was just starting to get bigger bookings. Yeah. When this whole thing hit, but I'm, I feel really grateful that, um, I'm still able to survive off like Spotify streams from everyone. And yeah. like, um, yeah, I've been able to survive just fine. I mean, I do miss the shows. Like that's the whole reason I started doing this, but I'm just super grateful that um, I've been able to power fr- power through and stay afloat until better times. Yeah, but since that since this is basically a break for a lot of us musicians, I'm curious, creatively wise, do you feel like it's helped you to kind of just hang out and just try out new ideas and just experiment with some stuff? Yeah, well, actually, that that's interesting. You bring that up because I. I was just starting to like feel really uninspired. Really? Uh, yeah, when this first hit, because I just feel like I got, I didn't realize how much, in, how much inspiration I got from like performing and meeting new people and going to different cities and interacting with like all my supporters. And then once I kind of came back to my bedroom, like completely alone. I was having trouble finding inspiration, which kind of led me to I'm, I've started this new side project that I haven't put anything out yet, but where I'm like experimenting singing with my voice. Ooh, I like that. Uh, yeah. And it's I'm excited about it because it's totally like not I mean, it's got EDM influence, but it's like kind of left field from what i normally do interesting uh, left field how like a different genre you mean yeah like i'd say it's kind of like 80s pop music ish oh i love that not, not like synthwave though right something slightly maybe kind of like that yeah maybe a little bit of that tied in there but i'm trying to make it something unique um but it's just been fun to like experiment with this like new style and use my voice and lyrics because I mean, if I had been, like, performing and, like, on that tour grind, I probably wouldn't have had the time to, like, dabble with this new style. So I'm, like, grateful for that. I love that, man. Is it nerve-wracking starting to use your voice? I mean, because I, I wasn't sure if you were a singer or not, but I imagine that you're probably a fairly decent singer. Is it a little bizarre and a little scary to start putting your voice on some tracks when, you know, for the most part, I feel like you've been producing some pretty cool hits, but now when you put your voice on something, I feel like that's that's a different ball game, you know? Oh, yeah, it's, it's super scary. I mean, I've been producing now for like four or five years and I've always tried to sing and I've always just like hated it. It just sounded like <laughs> scratching my nails on a chalkboard, but I've gotten to the point where I've been able to like make at least three tracks I want to put out where I'm like, all right, this is cool. And I'm really, I've noticed with like EDM, I've really like tried to make an emphasis of it for people to like, to be really deep with the songs and people to like really get in their feelings. Mm -hmm. Um, And with this style of music, it's all about sort of like, this new style where I'm singing, it's all about sort of like lifting people up and being like a bit more light with it. Mm. 
because I feel like I was just like, I mean, I love the feelsy music, but just listening to feelsy music all day has been like, it gets depressing sometimes. <laughs> yes, it does. I can attest to that. Yes, it does. Yeah. So it's been nice to, to do both and just not like pigeonhole myself. Interesting. Part of me wonders why that's such a well. Here's the thing. I'm going to preface this by by saying this. I'm I'm a drummer, right? And so I come from like the pop world. And when I got introduced to EDM, that was definitely one of the things that stood out to me quite a bit is all the emotion behind the music. Like I had no idea how powerful it could be and how much I could connect with myself by listening to this music and being a part of the 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 shows and all of that. Like it's crazy good. And how uh, how that feels, but I do admit I feel like it can get a little heavy if that's all you listen to. I'm curious if h- how does one transition from producing all this feelsy music to doing more? I guess you could call it happy, lifting you up kind of music. Where do you go for search for inspiration search? Uh, search just because you were saying how you were kind of like trying to find a new spot to find inspiration. So I'm curious. What inspired you or what elements did you try to seek out to help you create this new uplifting music? Yeah. Well, honestly, like, I feel like this has taken a toll on everyone's mental health. But I don't know. For me, especially, like, ever since I... I, like, I used to smoke all day for a bunch of years and then I quit and then, like, for some reason, like my mental health just became a lot more sensitive and Mm. I just spiraled into like anxiety and depression way quicker. And, um, yeah, I mean, I just, I've hit some really dark pits, honestly, throughout this quarantine and I was making all this like feelsy music. And I was just like, if I were feeling the way I feel right now, what would I want to listen to? Like, would I want to listen to more? I mean, some people like to cope um, when they're sad by listening to sad music. And I totally get that because it helps you like purge your sadness, I feel like in a way. But personally, like when I'm super sad and like feel hopeless, I want to like hear a message from someone I looked up to that's lifting me up. Um, And so then that inspired me to be like, all right, what lyrics can I say that like give people hope and give people joy rather than them like rather than make them cry about something, you know? Oh, so yeah. it's like I don't know. That's what was the inspiration was like what what would I want to hear right now if I was like feeling this way? I love that. If I can ask you, when you said you quit smoking, was that uh tobacco or was that like weed? Uh, that was both, but like mainly weed. Mainly weed. <laughs> yeah. No, I feel you, man. Anytime that I, I don't really smoke that much, but for me, I, I once I smoke, my whole day is gone. <laughs> it's yeah, like, it's <laughs> like, it's that kind of feeling. But if you don't mind me picking your brain a little bit, I know sometimes these places can get pretty dark. You know, when we explore these elements, but I'm not so sure if I if I'm allowed to. But I'm gonna ask anyways, and feel free to tell me not to go any mm-hmm. further. But when you were saying you went to some dark depressing places what i'm not even sure how detailed i can get but i'm genuinely curious what do you mean by that do you mean are there some occurrences in your life that that you've just been kind of carrying with you for a long time you just feel really really sad i'm just i'm genuinely kind of curious i'm trying to get a better picture of what you were feeling yeah just yeah just like personal stuff like i've been dealing with um i mean i was diagnosed with ocd a few years ago yeah, and not just like the generic cleanliness OCD. Like I was diagnosed with like a pretty intense form of it, and I went to therapy like once or twice a week, like consistently for three years. I'm going to therapy twice a week now, and I I tried like medications, and I I I've tried everything, man, and like. The medications didn't help me. Um, Like, I still had the same symptoms. And so I've come to this, like, conclusion where it's, like, I feel like the only way I'm going to get better is by taking it day by day, like, one breath at a time. I'm still going to therapy now, 
but um i'm really trying i'm trying to go sober now too mm. and um i've been sober for a couple months now like completely and i mean it's hard man like yeah it's a day to day struggle like it's taken me years but i i still have a light at the end of the tunnel that i hold on to and i'm just grateful like honestly this when you introduced me at the beginning that reminded me like why like my purpose and why i'm here is to like lift people up through music and that's what keeps me going but um yeah yeah i don't know kind of lost my train of thought no 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 i think you did a great job excuse me my throat is a little weird today no honestly i think it's quite fascinating the way that you bring it up because First off, I do feel like, you know, when you say OCD, it's kind of like when people say anxiety. It's a term that it's an actual medical condition that I think over time people have just learned to misuse it. Like if you say you have anxiety, I mean, do you really have anxiety or are you just feeling nervous? But right. some I know how intense OCD can get. And I'm I'm I understand how like heavy that can be. And mm-hmm. What I'm curious about, well, actually, it, even even going off of that, it must have been insanely hard once, like, the lockdown hit. Most people that I know that, you know, at some point go through therapy and they try to go sober or try to do stuff like that, there's tons of things to do to keep you distracted. But out of nowhere, now all of a sudden you're forced to being at home. And I guess that kind of correlates as to why you started making that new music then, right? Because you're trying mm-hmm. to kind of better yourself and you're trying to you know, trying to make this new music. Do you feel, and again, this is just kind of me being honest. Do you feel like your choice to go, to go sober, has that helped you in a positive way in terms of your creativity? Um, I think in a way, like I, I think it definitely has. Cause I mean, I wasn't like a full blown, alcohol i mean i consider myself an alcoholic but i only drank like once or twice a week and i would binge drink Mm. so like i don't know how to have one or two drinks so i would just drink a shit ton and then that would kind of like lead me to be like unable to move from my bed for two days after wow (laughs) yeah because i would just drink so much and i just wouldn't be able to move for like a day or two so i feel like that did definitely affect my productivity if I'm losing like two or three days out of the week because I'm hung over. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, in terms of creativity, I feel like uh, working out, like for some reason, like has helped me a lot. Like I used to play basketball my whole life growing up and then I got to college and just stopped working out and it's easy to do that. And it's been, it's super hard to force myself to work out now, but I find I get like a creativity boost after I work out. And if I were to be like drinking and smoking right now, like I definitely wouldn't work out. I would just chill. Yeah. (laughs) Well, can I ask you before, obviously these choices that you've made, it sounds like you've kind of been growing as a person and you have started making choices to better your life, or at least in the way that you see is a good thing before when you were still in it, so to speak, and you were making this music and you were making, you know, emotional music and all of that stuff. Um, had, did you ever, when you made this choice to go sober, I guess this is why, why I'm curious because I've known plenty of people that do this and this is a fear and I'm curious if you have experienced it too. Is there a fear that you might lose, you know, what I guess what you can say is where a lot of your inspiration came from by choosing to change your life in this sense? And I say this because... Unfortunately, I've met many people in the past, not everybody, but there's been plenty of people who kind of, they feel like they can thrive on that pain. You know what I mean? Like whenever their their life is a little depressing or there's some bad things, that's kind of where a lot of good music comes out of. Not always, but sometimes. And there's always this fear that if that were to change, maybe you'd lose that, that thing that made you special, you know? I'm curious, and again, we don't have to talk about it, but I'm curious if that's something that ever crossed your mind or if you feel that or if you can relate to it by any any sense. Yeah, no, that's super interesting. Dude, honestly, I feel like I've gone to such deep pits of pain that it's not hard to access that inspiration anymore for music. Mm. And I feel sorry for people that feel like they need to go through this vicious cycle of pain just to create more art. I mean, that sounds like literal hell. It does. It definitely does. 
Yeah, and it's like, I feel like I've hit such, like, depressing points that if I get to a point where I'm so happy that, like, and I and I'm like so happy and I can't make music that's depressing anymore. Like I would rather be happy and not make great music than make great music and be depressed. Like wow. what's the point what's the point of life if you're just gonna be depressed and like putting out more depressing music that has like mo- like that makes you money or gives you success? Like none of that sh- like sh- am I allowed to cuss on here? Absolutely. Cuss away, oh, yeah. man. I don't know, like none of that shit like money and like notoriety like that doesn't make you happy like it's got to come from internally so i'll take my mental health over selling records any day i love that and that knowledge that understanding that that's where your happiness should come from is that something that you've always been aware of because you've experienced a tremendous amount of success and it's growing every day and i'm curious if that's a lesson that you had to learn the hard way or is that something that you've always sort of known no, that's a lesson I've learned the hard way, and I'm learning it more and more lately. Like, I thought, like, at the beginning when I was, like, I'm 24 now, and I started this thing, this whole music launching, like, when I was 20. Mm. And when I was 20, I was like, all right, once I get this amount of plays, I'll be happy. I made it. Once I get this amount, uh, once I get this artist to play my track, I'll make it. Once I get this collab. And all those things happen. And I'm super grateful for them, but I never was like happy. Mm. I just was like, all right, now I got to do this now. Oh, this artist has more plays than me. I'm better than him. Fuck, this is depressing. Why am I doing this anymore? And you just go through these like spirals and loops that are just depressing. And I've learned like, it's so cliche, but I need to be um, happy with the now and happy with the journey and I need to find that happiness internally um and not rely on like outward success for my happiness because that's just a never-ending loop of hell yeah (laughs) no and I'm glad that you bring that up and I imagine that a lot of the new music that you're going to be putting out on these new projects they're probably going to reflect that mentality honestly i'm willing to bet that it talks more about that inspirational side of things i'm curious if you don't mind me asking some of your previous songs that you've released some of the ones that have done fairly well would you Mm -hmm. say that some of those songs might have been about some of the pain or things that you might have been experiencing at the time like is there a specific song that comes to mind that you remember that you might have written it in a dark place or about something that was painful and it did really well do you have anything like that in your catalog that you would remember? Yeah, I mean, I feel like every song comes from a real place that I put out. Like, I've never put out anything that has felt forced or that I'm not proud of. Um, they all come from very real places, but I do feel like um, they do sort of tug on the heartstrings right. a lot. And that can, after putting out like 40, 50 songs in four years where I'm like trying to tug on art strings, like it can, it can be a lot. Yeah. And is that your, um, when you were, when you produce music in general, do you sit down with that intention of trying to tug at heart, like at the heart strings or trying to get an emotion out of somebody? Like when you sit down to write a song, do you normally have a, a purpose in mind, like a theme in mind, or do you just kind of sit and let whatever comes out, come out? Yeah, like my creative process is like, I just make something that I think will sound dope to me personally. It's impossible not to think about what others will think. Mm. I mean, it's possible, but it's super hard. Yeah. Um, but I, I do my best to just make it for me, like, totally for me and I feel like the more I progress as an artist the more I make it for me without trying to think about what others will think um but honestly like what my deciding factor kind of been is for putting out music is if it sends chills through my body or not and if it does then I kind of feel like all right I made something Really? So how many tries does it take to get those chills out of your body? Because I will tell you from experience, for me, I feel like whenever I work on, on, a, on a song or I'm, I'm working on a production or something, it takes a good amount of tries before I feel like it hits me where I'm like, yeah, that, that's the one. But I'm curious if for you, if like you can do it fairly, like in one try. 
Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, when I first started, I'd probably like start like 20 or 30 projects and pick like one of them that turned into a song. But like these days, I feel like it's getting smaller and smaller, like maybe like I'll tr maybe out of five to 10 projects I start, I'll like end up with one that is released roughly. So like. I mean, it's a lot of trial and error. So maybe like 10 to 20% of the time I work on music, it ends up being a track I release. Mm. And do you normally start with like, because I'm generally curious about how you actually make your music. Because like I said earlier, I am very much impressed and inspired by what you make. It sounds really cool. It sounds really fresh. And now that you're actually even shifting gears, I'm, I'm definitely curious how it's going to sound like. But when you sit down to write a track, do you normally... Like, say, do you start with, like, a beat? Do you start with, like, a sound patch or something? Or how is it usually that you start? Because everybody, in my experience, everybody starts very different. For me, for example, I tend to start with, like, a beat, usually. And that's because I'm a drummer. So I tend to relate a lot with rhythm and, and beat. But I know plenty of people who start with a vocal line. Some people start with, like, a bass line. What do you start mm -hmm. with? Yeah, I used to start with a beat, but I feel like the past two or three years, I've never started with a beat, which is interesting. Because I feel like, I don't know, I feel like if I'm able to make something that sounds good, I love make, starting to make stuff without bass and without the beat. Because I mm. feel like if I can get it to sound good without any sub bass or any drums, like once those, once that bass and drums come in, it's just going to like smack. And so... I either start with like a chord progression, like just like a simple piano or synthesizer with the chord progression. Um, but my favorite way to do it is to start with the vocal and just from the vocal, I'll build the chord progression. And then after I build the chord progression, I'll put in different sounds with the same progression and different melodies. And then put in the bass and then I'll put in the drums at the end normally. Mm. And how long does that usually take? Would you say like, could you basically finish all of that in a day, like in one sitting? Like make a song start to finish. Yeah. Like when you start with like the chords and then you like write like a lead line and then you add the bass and the drums, because to me it sounds like you've kind of become a bit of a pro at it uh, over the past yeah. like four or five years. You pretty much have gotten that to a point where you kind of know what you're looking for. And yeah. I imagine someone like you, once they kind of get their creativity going, that they can probably finish it in one or two or a couple of sittings. But I don't know. Everyone's different. Yeah. No, if I'm like super grinding on the song and I have a deadline that's due tomorrow and it's like I need to get the song done, then I can get it done in like five, five to ten hours. Mm. I love yeah. that. That's actually not that bad. That's pretty, pretty darn quick, dude. And well, yeah. here's one thing I'm curious about, kind of backtracking a little bit, because I want to know a little bit more about your life story. And all of this ties together for me because it's a very unique and interesting story. You're relatively young. You're 24 years old. You're experiencing success and you're already at a point where you are mentally trying to grow to a point where you're choosing happiness over anything else. And I think that's actually a very, very important part of your story, because believe it or not, Many people don't get to that point until, I don't even know, maybe even late 30s, 40s. If there, if there has to be an average, I would argue that's something most people don't visit until the later part of their life. Mm -hmm. I'm curious for you, when you first started with music, um, or actually even backtracking a little bit before then, I kind of want to know how you got started with music. Because to me, that all ties together with your decision making and, and how it is that you approach your sound. Walk me through a little bit what it was like before you started uh, working on music and what made you want to start doing music. Yeah, so I wasn't like super big into music until I was like, I mean, uh, for some reason, the first CD I remember listening to that I like listened to on repeat was like Black Eyed Peas. Ah, oh, which one? <laughs> uh, the one with Where Is The Love. That oh, CD the classic one, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> the elephants on it, I think. Yeah, yeah, everybody knows that one. I love that one. Yeah, and then um, the first artist, though, that I really fell diehard in love with when I was probably, like, in eighth grade or a freshman in high school was Eminem, mm. um, which was weird because I fell in love with all his, like, older music, and I just listened to all his albums, and um, he's he's my favorite artist of all time. And then... 
Shout out I, to Eminem. Yeah. The goat. <laughs> and then um, I uh, actually the the first thing I started creating music wise was when I was in I was eighteen. I went to this really strict Catholic high school. Oh shit! Like, really strict, and I just wanted to break out and just be like, "Fuck the system! Fuck the rules!" Like this place is so confining. I want to express myself, and then that led me to rapping. Whoa! I did not expect that. But yeah, I mean, I'm assuming so, since you like Eminem, actually, that kind of makes sense. Yeah, but I was just like. You know, I was, like, smoking and drinking, and I, like, enjoyed that, listening to that kind of music while I was doing that, and that's how I wanted to express myself artistically at the time. So I, like, I made a rap, and then I sent it to a friend, and then he just, like, airdropped it to people, and then, like, when airdrop first came out on the Mac. It's <laughs> um, a while ago, man. <laughs> yeah, this is... Yeah, we're talking like seven years ago, maybe. Um, and then it just it kind of got like fun around the school. Like people were listening to it around school. And then like the day I graduated, I put out this like five track thing that I made on GarageBand. <laughs> <laughs> With it, all the loops and stuff that they give you on there? Oh, dude, it was like I I stole the beats off YouTube, first of all classic just straight up stole them and then i'd have like my vocal track on one and then on another track would be a deep voice like doing ad libs like whoa like way <laughs> <laughs> oh man i love that yeah so that's how it started and i i just started rapping and then uh i had been like dabbling with edm a list a little bit like listening to it and i was like oh this is cool and then for some reason when I was 18, it's so cliche, but I don't know. Something inside me just made me want to go to Coachella. Mm. And what year? Went, what year was it? Uh, 2014. 2014. I'm trying to remember who the headliner was. I mean, you would know. Yeah, I was um, Outcast, Kid Cudi, and uh, I forget the other one. I don't know if Kid Cudi headlined actually, but it was Outcast. The year with Outcast. Yeah. I'm trying to remember. Ah. I don't know, but it, everyone was there that year. Like yeah. Relix, Bloom, RL Grimes, Zed, uh, Adventure Club, Flostradamus, Martin Garrix. Like it was insane. Um Damn, man, that's a great ass lineup. Jesus. Yeah, there was more. Like it was the Flume like debuted tennis courts there, like he'd never played it before. And so yeah, I went to Coachella and I was just like, I didn't know what to expect, but all of a sudden it was like three o'clock and I went into the Sahara tent and I just like saw everyone around me and it just clicked in my head and I was just like, holy shit, this is awesome. Because I've been to like rap concerts before and like, I don't know, the vibe is different at very EDM different. Pros. It's very different. Yeah, and I was, like, kind of turned off. Like, I would went to this rap festival thing, and, like, everyone's just to themselves. Everyone's mm -hmm. kind of, like, keeping in themselves, kind of like a jerk to everyone. Like, <laughs> True. It is true. Yeah, I don't know. Just from, like, my experience, like, people aren't – I mean, there's no – it's so cliche, but there's no, like, flur at a rap show. Like, right. at least from my experience. But then I go to this, like, EDM – Sahara tend to Coachella and like every like strangers feel like my best friends and everyone's sharing water, which obviously isn't going to happen anymore because of COVID. But like right. back then we were all like, <laughs> not allowed anymore. Not no, okay. but yeah, like everybody was helping each other, like putting people on shoulders, like hugging, loving, dancing. And I just felt like free. And I was like, Oh my gosh, this is so great. And then from then on, I just started going to festivals, like only Hard Summer and Coachella. I went to like Hard Summer every year, like the L.A. ones. And then I went to Hard Summer 2015. And I remember meeting, I told this story before on a few interviews, but I remember meeting this like total stranger. And it was just me and a couple of friends and we were vibing with him and we were like total strangers. 
and we ended up just like arm in arm, like watching this. It was like Arl Grime or Jackie or something, and he was just like, "Dude, like imagine what it'd be like to be up there." Mm. And the next day, I like downloaded music software. I was going to college at the time at LMU. You know where that is? LMU is that um, what is that? Loyola? No, that's not Loyola. Yeah, Loyola Marymount. Okay, yeah, that's the one. Um, that's it's close to the beach, right? Yeah, it's by LAX in Westchester. Gotcha. Yeah, uh, yeah, Loyola. Damn. Yeah, and I was going there at the time, and then like after that hard summer when that guy was just like, dude, imagine what it'd be like to be up there. Then I just started dabbling with music software, and I. I, I was in college, like I got good grades in high school and I was like really trying hard. And I, what were you studying? If I can ask. Yeah. I, I got into like the business school just cause I wanted to do something broad and mm. I had no idea what I wanted to do. And then I was just so depressed in college and cause I felt like I hated presentations. I hated papers I felt like I was studying just to get a piece of paper that wasn't going to help me like achieve any dream I wanted. And I just reached a breaking point and I was just like, fuck it. Like I have one life. I'm going to go for this music thing. <laughs> Hell yeah. And then I ended up going to Icon in Burbank. Right. And legendary school, man. Everybody's gone there. Yeah. And once I went there, I just developed this sort of like Kobe mentality. Kobe and Eminem are like my heroes. And I developed this just like Kobe mentality of like, even though I'm going to go to class and do my homework and all that, I'm like going to go to school in the morning when no one's booking the studio and I'm just going to grind. And I'm going to like, people are were always saying like, it's going to take a long time for you to have success. And I was just like, no, fuck that. I'm going to work my ass off and I'm going to, like have success like soon fast and i just worked really hard and once i went to icon i was just like all right i figured out what i want to do in life i'm never going back to college and i don't care how long it takes i'm gonna do music and yeah that's kind of how i got started that was a lot dude i <laughs> i love that i love your story because you just went for it were your uh, was your family supportive of you dropping out from loyola studying business to go to icon and study music production definitely not at first <laughs> um, and i owe my family a lot because they've helped support me through all that but it did take a lot of convincing for them to, to like still support me as they're done like leaving a good college and just being like a college dropout pursuing music basically mm. uh, but I think they saw like how depressed I was. Like it took months for them because I kept saying like, ah, I hate it here. I'm depressed. I want to leave. And I gave it a solid year and a half at LMU. Um, and then they finally were like, all right, you can try Icon. Like, cause you could take a leave of absence from LMU for like a year and then come back. Right. And so they're, I, that's like, I was just like, yeah, I'll just leave for a year. I'll try Icon come back and then I went to Icon and then once I started having a little bit of online success then they started to come around and they're like oh yeah maybe he can do this and then as I just started to grow like yeah they didn't want me to leave college but they just wanted me to be happy in the end and I'm really grateful for that some good parents man I mean I'm proud of them it's very honest as a musician myself, I totally understand that feeling of you having to tell your parents that, hey, I want to study music as opposed to studying like to be a doctor or a lawyer or something yeah. like that, right? Well, how was your experience at Icon? Because I always hear about the school, and I've actually never talked to somebody, um, or actually I've never actually been there myself, but I'm curious, what, were you, what was your experience like going to Icon? We can talk, that, uh, talk about that for a second. Yeah, no, I loved Icon. I think Icon's amazing. Uh I just think it's so awesome to have a school that's completely dedicated to the craft of electronic music. Like you don't go there to learn how to DJ, which I think is like a huge misconception. Like people are like, how do I get into DJing? And it's like, well, to get into DJing these days, at least you have to be a producer. Um, and so like, I don't know. I don't think any school comes close to icon in terms of learning music production. 
but I feel like the the people that really succeed out of icon because I feel like most of the people in my class don't have or most of the people that try to make it in music don't have to like yeah the, the odds of actually making it is very very slim yeah but I feel like the people that do have success are the ones who like I, I, I do a lot of sports analogies because I play basketball my whole life, but it's like they're great analogies. The best, they work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks. So like the best basketball players aren't the ones who go to practice and um that's it, right? The best ones are the ones who go to practice and then they put in eight hours more practice on top of the two around two hour practice. So it's like if you just go to icon and do the homework and like that's all you do. Like, I don't think you're going to have success unless you're just like a genius. But if you go to icon, do the homework and then put in like six to eight hours on YouTube every day on top of that, those are the people that have success, you know? Mm. So you were going to school, you were learning how to produce and then you were what looking up tutorials on YouTube on how to do more stuff. Yeah. I was looking at YouTube tutorials all day Damn. on top of it. So I feel like my knowledge is like, I feel like Icon's just so awesome because it provided me like a school where I could just put everything into music and have free time outside of class to study on YouTube. But like these days, I mean, Icon's only a one-year program. Like I'm still looking at YouTube tutorials like to this day because I feel like once you admit that you've learned everything, that's it's when your music starts to get stale. Yep, it's no good, man. You always got to be willing to learn something new. That's how you grow. Yeah. Exactly. I'm curious when you were at uh, even to this day, but I guess when you were at Icon, was there a moment that you learned something specific that made you feel like, oh shit, this was the turning point where you felt like you knew what you were doing? Was there for me, for example, uh, just using myself as an example, was learning how to how to use Serum, for example. Once I understood how to actually like apply LFOs and how to use the matrix and all that, I felt different, you know. And I'm curious if there was a moment for you where you were. First, like an amateur, you were first learning how to do it on your own, and then all of a sudden it hit you like, oh, shit, I kind of know what I'm doing now. Yeah, honestly, same, like, <laughs> with Serum. like Such a complicated learning. thing, but at the same time, not. It's, it's just so weird. Yeah, or it's just like, it was. I had tried Massive before, and Serum was the first synth where I was like, okay, I can actually, like, follow these YouTube tutorials and, like, make something unique in this and then like yeah learning serum and i'm not a master at it but i can maneuver but like learning serum and then also like when i was able to get my first like mix and master that i thought sounded decent mm. um then i was like oh okay this is like almost as loud or as loud as the pros i guess that means i can be have fun creatively now because i've and make something that's as loud as like the people I look up to or close to it. Yeah. And then how long was it that, uh, that it took for you? Like once you started studying and once you were like grinding it, grinding it out, how long did it take for you to get that mix and master that you thought was fairly good? And then how long did it take after that until you had like your first like online hit or something that was, you know, resembling successfulness online? Yeah, so normally what most kids did at Icon was like they did the whole program and then they started releasing after they finished. But for some reason, I was it, the way Icon works is it's four levels. And I made it to level three and I was just like itching to put out music. Like I had, but I had no release plan. I had nothing, but I'd like worked on this song I made called Reborn. I don't know if you know that one. I do not actually. Yeah, that's the first song I put out, and I worked on it for, like, two or three months, like, the mix and master, basically, and it's so funny, because to this day, I listen to that track, and it's, like, my quietest song that I've worked <laughs> on that master for, like, three Do you ever listen back to it and, and, and just kind of, uh, what's the word? Do you ever listen back to it and just feel like, ugh, I could have done so much better? Yeah, well, like, it sounds clean, but it's just quiet, you know? Yeah. But I, I'm learning more and more, like, oh, I won't get on a tangent. But anyways, yeah, I made that song, and I was like, I had missed the the rush I got from putting out rap songs, and I kind of just deleted my whole Instagram and went MIA, because I, like, I had a little success with the rap, so it was kind of weird for me to delete everything and just go to EDM. 
Um, but then I, I put out the song and luckily my homie Nate was in my class. Um, and he was a SoundCloud promoter and which was the cool thing about Icon was like, I, there was this, <laughs> my homie was a SoundCloud promoter nice. and that's when SoundCloud was a lot more popping like four years ago. Right. Um, and I just, I was just like, I want to put out this song. Here's a hundred bucks. If you could promote it, like, um, like get it some big reposts or whatever. And it just started blowing up like my first song. And I oh, was just yeah. like, yeah. And I was just like, holy crap. Like, I, I'm in it now. And like people were hitting me up, like a few agents and managers, and I was not ready. Like I had no other music to show them really. And I was like, shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> Holy shit, man. What'd you do? What did you just like start making more music as fast as you possibly could? Exactly. So I just went Kobe mode and I was just like, all right, I'm going to grind out one song a month, no matter what it takes. And I just started putting out a song a month. And I've basically done that, the song a month, basically for about four years. Wow. And it's clearly working for you. You know what's funny about that story? I know of a very similar story. Um, I can't remember the name of the artist, but uh, there was this, um, I, uh, regardless, there was a story of this, this band that had a very, very good song back in like the 90s. Just insane song. And I interned for this very like famous entertainment lawyer. So he told me this story and he was just saying how like this band was just incredible. Every label wanted that one song, but every time they would approach them like, hey, can I hear some more? That was the only song they had and mm -hmm. they didn't make any more after that. And so they kind of faded into obscurity. But that story mm -hmm. reminds me a lot of yours, because even if the opportunity comes knocking at the door, you also got to be able to follow that shit up. You know, you got to be mm -hmm. able to keep that momentum going. And it seems like you just didn't fucking care. You just went for it without even worrying about it. And then it, it worked for you very clearly yeah i think i needed to do it because i was like getting anxious and stuff about like fuck i love college like is this the right decision to do and after putting out that song i just needed a little success after i put out the, that song it fueled me and inspired me to keep going and i feel like if i would have like waited for years or waited too long until i had like four perfect songs in a perfect release schedule and then like it didn't work out then i would be crushed so mm -hmm. i just wanted to get out a song and then the success of that song inspired me to make the next song and then the success of my second song inspired me to make my third song so it just was kind of like a domino effect mm. i'm curious would you have put out the song if it wasn't like up to par because you're absolutely right i do feel like that is something that a lot of artists have it's just kind of a side effect of being a musician is that you want things to sound good especially when you listen to everything else is out uh but clearly you knew what you were doing but i'm i'm wondering if you ever thought about this if it wasn't up to par would you still have pushed it as hard as you did or would you have waited um like if i didn't think the song was up to par yeah like if you thought the song could have been better maybe you just didn't feel like it was as best as you could because that's something that literally goes through the mind of almost every artist I've ever encountered. You know, they kind of sit there like, ah, it could be a little bit better. And I feel like a lot of the people that succeed, like you, for example, are the ones that are kind of able to separate themselves from, you know, that for perfectionism or whatever, however you pronounce it, uh, and then being able to just be practical about it and just release something. And uh, that worked for you. But I'm curious if it was a struggle uh, or if it ever was a struggle for you to release something or if you were always just about it. You were just like, fuck it, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to put something out. Don't care how it sounds. I'm just going to go for it, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, totally. Honestly, I've never made a song where I'm like, this is perfect. Mm. And I feel like people have a hard time, like you said, putting out music consistently because, yeah, I'm a perfectionist, but I feel like people take it to another level and they try to achieve this level of, perfection that's it's just not possible yeah and you need to separate yourself and just be like all right i've worked my ass off on this i've made this song as good as it possibly could be and a big fact and yeah I, i've never put out a song i think's perfect and like every time i put out a song i don't know if it's gonna do good like i feel like my confidence has increased a little bit but still every time i put out a song i'm like I have no idea how this is going to do, but 
the factor I use to determining if I put out a song or not is like, would I be depressed or upset if the world didn't hear this? Mm, and then if I, yeah. And if I'm like, all right, if I would feel like uncomfortable with the world, not hearing this, then I want it to come out. But if I make something and it's not up to par and I'm like, I don't really want anyone to listen to this or I don't care if they do, then I won't put that out. Mm. And you're basically working on like, like you mentioned earlier, you basically have like a couple projects going on and then you end up choosing one or two out of them. Correct. Usually. Yeah. Usually. Um, yeah. Usually I like, I just try to have now these days I try to have like five to 10 tracks done at a time and then like still, while still releasing like at least once a month or once every two months gotcha and so now with your new music that you've got going on this new project that you have in your hands does this mean that you're kind of are, are you gonna do a departure from the music that you've done before or is this just something that's going to exist alongside what you're currently doing oh no yeah it's, i'm gonna do both like i mean cave on the cave on project is like that's where my heart is ultimately. And the side project is where my heart is too. But if, if it's not successful, it's okay. I'm just kind of doing it for me. Like I take the cave on project more seriously, I guess, mm. because I don't know. I, I mean, it's working. Some, it's working. Yeah. So you take it seriously. Yeah. It's working. I put so much into it and the other projects kind of more for my mental health. And if it does well, then great. And if it doesn't, who cares? Like it was therapeutic to make it and put it out. Yeah, man. I do appreciate you being very honest and open about a lot of these things, uh, especially when it comes to your experience, your story and how you have, you know, worked through music and made your, your shit happen. It's actually really quite impressive uh, for a lot of your fans out there. Or actually, if I may, just briefly ask you this when it comes to your mental health uh do you feel like it's something that that has been improving quite a bit through the the whole entire quarantine i know we've kind of touched on it a little bit but to kind of just start tying things up a little bit i'm all about mental health and making sure that people are as happy as they possibly can because at the end of the day being happy is ultimately what matters. As cliche as that sounds, you hear it mm -hmm. all the fucking time because it's fucking true. I mean, there's so many successful people that are not happy, you know, and they ultimately end up having to rediscover themselves. And so for you, do you feel like this new path that you've taken, that you've chosen, do you see it taking great effect in your life? Do you see it like improving everything around you? I mean, the way I kind of look at it is like the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, yeah. and expecting a different result. And for years I've been escaping like facing reality and through weed and through alcohol and drugs. And I've done that since I was like 16 and it's not like, okay, now I'm going to quit all that stuff and it's my life's going to get better you know like mm -hmm. no it's not it's my life's going to get harder now i'm not using those things as an escape but i'm tired of living like life where that's what i need to do to be happy like it sounds like such a dream to me and i don't know how to do it yet but like to live life happy without a substance like and with like without having the negative like come downs from those substances like that sounds like heaven and like i've reached a point where i'm like i'm determined to try and reach that goal somehow and i'm giving it my best effort so no i wouldn't say i would say i'm doing more healthy things for my mental health but it's not a walk in the park you know it's like no. facing it's facing reality and i feel like if I'm able to do this, though, then I'm set for life. Yeah. You Dude, know? I am so happy to hear that. And I know that we, we've we touched on it many in many different forms in this conversation, but I, I just think it's a very important topic to talk about. I know it's been talked to death in many different ways, but it makes a difference when it's coming from 
you know, someone who's living it and, you know, for your fans too, to like understand that, you know, you are trying your best to take care of yourself and it's always important to do that. And I think yeah. it's never going to take away from your talent or your music or your creativity. It's just, it's really cool. It's one of the things that I like to bring up. I, I just think it's really cool that you are aware enough to, to make those choices for yourself and to understand that that's what you need specifically for your life and that you're just handling business. And so I'm very, very happy for you, my man, Kayvon. I really am very, very happy for you for all the stuff that you've been doing. And I know that we've already touched on it, but is there anything else that you'd like to touch on for like the new music you've got going on? I know that it's kind of hush-hush. You're kind of working on it and stuff. Is there anything in the horizon that maybe like a hint or something that you've got anything big that you're working on that we could potentially know about yeah well i mean i got a few releases coming i have like three releases coming out in september october and november and um i'll just say the name of my new project i haven't announced it anywhere but it's going to be called august mm. and um i'm in the process of making some like music videos right now um which i'm really excited about that i'm putting a lot of like effort into and um that should hopefully come out sometime this year as well cool so amy sure. before the end of the year before holiday season or like may whenever you want yeah i love that man my man cave on thank you so much for taking time out of your day i really appreciate you being open i really appreciate you being honest and i'm definitely looking forward to your music because it's gonna be so sick i already know and the fact that you're taking care of yourself i tip my hat to that because that's always important i think it's a very good message to constantly be spreading so thank you so much man i really appreciate your time yeah thank you so much eddie and just for everyone listening if you're going through a rough time just know that it will get better nothing stays the same and to reach out to a, th a friend talk to a therapist and i love you so much i love you